Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be getting into creating our simple web application using Streamlit. In previous video, we created a simple iris classification model. We processed the data and stored it in a pickle file. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I would recommend to do so, so that you will have a complete idea about the whole process behind creating our web application. So without wasting any time, let's get started. Before coming towards the coding part, I would highly recommend you to create a separate virtual environment. In this case, I am using Anaconda Navigator because it's always great to experiment and mess up in your separate environment instead of our base environment. If you are using Anaconda, you can jump to your Anaconda Navigator and you can click on Create Environment. You can just go to Environments and you can see an option of creating a new environment over here. You can create a separate environment in which you can download our dependencies which we will need for our web application. Coming towards the coding part, we will start by importing our libraries. First and most importantly, importing Streamlit as ST. Make sure that you have Python version of 3.6 to 3.8 which is supported by Streamlit, whichever available. We'll import pandas as pd and we'll also import pickle. We'll be using pickle for deserializing our pickle file which we had made in our previous video for making new predictions with our model. And also we'll import image from pil which is pillow. Well this pillow enables image processing in python while image will return as an image object. We will use image to decorate our web application a little bit. Before importing, please make sure that you have downloaded these libraries in your new virtual environment. You can just download by using pip install and the library name. Now here, we'll be deserializing our pickle file which we had made in our previous video. I have just renamed my file as irismodel.pickle and we have kept it read binary and we'll save this in our variable called model. Now from this, I'll be demonstrating by keeping my created web application aside. Now, as you can see, these lines of codes are focused on UI part of our Streamlit application. You can see we have added a header, iris classification, and here we'll be opening our image. Now, in our case, I have used this particular image. You can choose any image of your choice. Just make sure that you're keeping the format right. If it's JPEG, please mention JPEG over here or else it will pop up an error. We will write the command st.image which will pop up our image on the application and also we'll give the format as PNG over here. And we'll also write st.write, please insert values to get iris classified iris class predictions now these all lines of code will be appeared over here we have image classification and beneath it's please insert values to get iris class prediction you can change or you can customize by your choice now if you recall our data set it consisted of four independent variables called sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width so we need this data to make further predictions so how can we take these values from the user? Now in the following steps, we'll be taking the inputs from the user and store them in our respective variables. Streamlit here offers an amazing interactive slider option from which we can take the inputs. We take inputs such as sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width by providing them a slider option by passing the command st that is streamlit.slider and then we mention the limiting values of our slider such as the starting point of our slider and the ending values of our slider we can also keep this such as blank text box in which the user can type manually but the slider seems better as far as presentation can be concerned for taking inputs now let's see how can these sliders look in our actual web application this is our sliders. We have separate four sliders for sepal length, sepal width, petal length and petal width. 
and these are the limiting values the starting limiting value and the ending limited value as we mentioned previously now when users come to our web application if he wants to add some values you can just scroll any of these values through the slider and this looks quite good than keeping just a text box in which the user can manually type the data now we'll create a dictionary in which we'll pass on our variables to the respective inputs we need for our prediction as per our real data set and finally convert this dictionary into a data frame the format which will be using by our model for making the respective predictions now we will use this model now what is this model this is the serialized class deserialized classification model which we had taken from our pickle file over here which will be using for the predictions in future as we had stored our inputs in the variable called feature the dictionary to data frame we'll pass on these features into our model dot predict proba that is predict probability of our features which will return the probability of our iris species like what is the probability that input value represent the specific iris species or we can just keep it as model dot predict which will return 0 or 1 now in this final step we'll display the probabilities of the iris species which will depend on our input values like what is the prediction probability that input value represents iris setosa or iris versicolor or iris virginica will multiply the values by 100 that will represent the percentage we'll just see that how our web application works okay so when the user visits our web application he will select the values like sepal length sepal width petal length and petal width and depending upon these values the user will get an prediction like what is the percentage what is the prediction percentage that these values are iris setosa so it's 99% it's iris setosa we are done with the coding part and now we'll see how can we run this code as a web application so if you're using anaconda i'm using spider over here when you click into the anaconda prompt first of all you will be directed to your base environment so if you have created your new virtual environment you need to activate that virtual environment first we can activate that by executing activate the virtual environment name here is god once you're done with this you have been direct directed to the virtual environment and now we need to change the directory to the directory in which you have saved your code now in my case i have a separate folder which consists of all the files i'll just copy this whole file path and in my anaconda prompt i'll write change directory and the file path and execute this once you are done with this streamlit has a separate syntax for running the web applications you need to type streamlit run and the application name in my case it's app1.py so you need to type app1.py so it will be streamlit run and the name of the file in which you have written the code and we'll execute this once you are done executing the syntax streamlit run app1.py you will be automatically redirected to your streamlit web application as well as you will get a link where your web application has been created you can copy uh, copy paste this link into any of your browser which will pop up your web application and finally we have created our web application using streamlit you can experiment this web application you can experiment with your creativity i would also recommend to go through the official streamlit documentation where you can explore their another features also would recommend to try and experiment with this with your other data sets as well this was all from my side and i guess these resources are quite sufficient for you to create your first web application i have also written a blog in which i have given a detailed explanation about the same process which we discussed in our video you can refer this you can give a clap over here if you like it if you genuinely like this video as well as the whole playlist 
please do give a like subscribe my channel as well as give your genuine views regarding the playlist you don't need to worry anything about the code i'll be sharing the github link below in the description also i'll be attaching the link for my blog as well thank you so much for watching take care and bye bye